Good evening, committee. This evening, we'll be providing an update on our climate action and adaptation plan. Join me, joining me this evening is Jeff Caden, consultant with ESA, who will be providing part of the presentation. The purpose of the meeting this evening is to review recent efforts regarding the climate action and adaptation plan. We'll also be presenting information on the greenhouse gas emission reductions proposed within the document with a focus on actions most effective to reduce GHGs. And then finally, we'll summarize community stakeholder and survey input. At this point, I'll turn the presentation over to Jeff Caden. Thanks, Kathleen. In March, we reported on the city's greenhouse gas emissions inventory and we introduced strategies for reducing emissions. The results shown here are for the city's 2018 emissions. They're broken down by sector. Uh, and note that the numbers are somewhat different from what you saw in the March report. And this is because re there were revisions to the modeling that underlies the transportation emissions estimates. Emissions from uh, municipal operations were also measured and they made up just 3% of total emissions. Next slide. The scope of work calls for developing a qualified climate action plan. And this is a plan that reduces community-wide emissions 40% below 1990 levels by 2030 to be in line with the statewide target that's mandated by Senate Bill 32. But just relying on what the state is doing is not enough to reduce uh, greenhouse gas emissions enough to reach this target. Uh, and so the, the city is going to have to take additional action and additional strategies are needed uh, to reduce local emissions. And this will require a commitment of city resources and funds. The focus is on community emissions, emissions because they make up 97% of the total, but taking action to address municipal sources can demonstrate city leadership and commitment. Next slide. In March, uh, the council report identified specific strategies that are needed to reduce community emissions. And this includes greening the elect electricity supply. The city has been proactive on this front by joining the uh, Community Clean Power Alliance in 2018. Another effective strategy is electrifying buildings and transportation. Title, the Title 24 building code ensures that future buildings will be trending more towards electric and that uh, they'll be more efficient and the city has been installing some electric vehicles in its, within its fleet. Another effective strategy is improving energy efficiency of buildings that's also covered by Title 24 for new buildings and back in 2013 or 2014 the city adopted an energy action plan and has been focused on improving energy efficiency of existing buildings throughout the community. Another effective strategy is to reduce vehicle miles traveled or VMT. The city is now working on its sustainable transportation plan and making progress in that regard. And finally, uh, uh, reducing waste and conserving water also reduces emissions. And the city is now engaged in a resource management plan or at least taking action towards that. And, and that will help divert uh, solid waste from landfill, including uh, organics. Next slide, please. In May, the, uh, the city conducted six stakeholder meetings and two community meetings uh, to engage um, the community and solicit input on greenhouse gas reduction measures, as well as uh, the vulnerabilities that the city is facing with respect to climate change. There was also a survey. We got 133 responses. The feedback indicated strong from, from all these efforts indicated strong support for the city to take action to reduce emissions, but also to protect disadvantaged communities from climate change impacts. Next slide, please. With regards to strategies for reducing greenhouse gas emissions, there was strong support for reducing vehicle miles traveled, in particular new development that promotes walking and reduces driving and providing safer routes for cyclists and, and pedestrians. These were identified as extremely effective by more than 90% of the survey respondents. The rest of these strategies shown here were identified as extremely effective by around 80% of respondents, and that includes improving the energy efficiency of buildings and electrifying buildings, electrifying transportation, so expanding charging options and, and, and electrifying the city fleet, Greening the electricity supply, which I mentioned earlier, so that's using more renewable electricity from the grid, but also includes installing more rooftop solar uh, systems throughout the community and on municipal buildings. 
and then striving for zero waste. So there was strong support for recycling and diverting organic materials from landfill. Next slide, please. Regarding climate change vulnerability, the community expressed a desire for strategies and resources to be fairly distributed and that address the needs of the most vulnerable populations in the city. And that includes renters and those who live in older homes and also outdoor workers like farm workers. The three climate change impacts of greatest concern identified by the uh, participants were extreme heat, drought and air pollution, in particular smoke from wildfires. As mentioned earlier, additional actions are needed to reach the 2030 target and the best opportunities for reducing emissions, those that provide the greatest benefit at the lowest cost are electrifying transportation, greening the electricity, su electricity supply and improving the energy efficiency of buildings. Each of these general strategies and associated key actions are presented for discussion on the following slides. When it comes to electrifying transportation, an important strategy is expanding electric vehicle charging infrastructure with priority going to disadvantaged communities. This is important because transportation is, uh, contributes about 44% of total emissions in the city. And we know that shifting to electric vehicles is a state priority right now. There's a lot of funding coming through the pipe for electric vehicle infrastructure, and that's envisioned to continue for many years. Uh, it's important to note also that Oxnard has one of the lowest rates of EV ownership in California compared to the state. And so the potential actions we're considering in the, in the cap include complete a citywide plan for expanding electric vehicle infrastructure, track and pursue funding opportunities for expanding that infrastructure, install EV charging and potentially hydrogen fueling stations, uh, as well as preferential, pre preferential parking for EVs throughout the city, implement EV car sharing programs, and then consider a fleet replacement plan or policy for city vehicles that includes electric or hybrid vehicles. On the next uh, piece of, of, of electricity, greening the electricity supply, an important component is supporting that 95% participation rate in, in Clean Power Alliance, uh, their 100% green tier that the, currently, the city currently enjoys. It's really important to continue that through the year 2030 because doing so would, would, would really get the city a long way towards their 2030 target. Electricity makes up 24% of total emissions. So just getting that down towards zero in terms of emissions will go a long way towards meeting the city's target. Currently, there are 96% of residents and 92% of businesses purchasing that 100% green level from the CPA. So we wanna keep that, those percentages up near that level. That'll take investing staff time and, and financial resources to maintain that level along in partnership with CPA. It'll be important to educate businesses and residents uh, uh, on, on the value of doing that, of, of maintaining their, their participation at that level. And uh, partnering with CPA can be done to, to low income customers in particular to make them aware of, of assistance programs. And subsidizing low income, low income communities will help maintain that 100% green uh, participation. Next slide. Another way to green the electricity supply is to expand the local generation of solar energy, and that can be done through existing programs uh, that focus on community solar. CPA has a community solar program right now. Oxarn is not currently participating in that. And it, what it does is it reduces the cost of green electricity for low-income communities. And it can also, if, if you combine that with storage solutions, it can also help ensure energy resilience during outages. It's worth noting that CPA, the Clean Power Alliance, is currently funding an energy storage pilot project at the city service center. So supporting actions for this that we're considering for the CAP are, are partnering with CPA to develop a community solar program, identify sites for implementation, to promote CPA customer awareness and, and enrollment in the community solar program, and to help 
the CPAs help develop CPAs demand response program, which offers incentives to non-residential customers to install energy storage. Next slide, please. This map is from Cal and Virus Green. And it, it, so in, in identifying sites for community solar, we can look at areas of the city that are disadvantaged and where people have the greatest need. Cal and Virus Green, the Cal and Virus Green tool assesses vulnerability at the census tract level using uh, multiple factors that include income, education, underlying health status, uh, linguistic isolation, existing exposure, exposure to pollution and other factors. Next slide. So staying with energy, another key strategy is improving energy efficiency and electrification of buildings. This could be done through partnering with CPA and other organizations, including the Ventura County uh, Regional Energy Alliance and the Tri-County Regional Energy Network. These, these organizations have programs uh, that can be taken advantage of uh, that will that will fund these kinds of projects. Uh, the energy used by buildings that just worth noting, energy used, used by buildings in the city represents 43% of total emissions. So higher efficiencies in building electrification will be needed to reduce emissions from this segment of the, of the uh, inventory. And by so by purchasing electricity from CPA, we're already de dealing with the electricity portion. So what we're really targeting here are emissions from natural gas. Title 24 will ensure that new construction and major retrofits are efficient and pre-wired for electrification. So there's no requirement. Um, there's no requirement to for us here in the CAP to focus on, on new buildings. We want to focus on uh, the existing buildings. Next slide, please. So associated potential actions uh, under this strategy are to market those local utility rebates and incentives. And, and also the programs from CPA and Ventura County Regional Alliance and the 3C REN. Promote programs that help residents and businesses swap out gas appliances for electric, for electric appliances like space and water heaters. Promote technical support services to improve energy efficiency of existing buildings and building electrifications. So the action, there are actions uh, that, to reduce in the, in the cap that will focus on municipal uh, emissions as well, um, but they're not listed out here. Next slide, please. Thank you, Jeff. At this point, I'll cover with the committee the next steps and schedule. We'll be conducting outreach to a targeted stakeholder group on January 26th and 27th, and the purpose with that is to go over climate change and vulnerabilities. The committee, uh, excuse me, the public and um, as well as the stakeholders did give some input regarding vulnerability and vulnerabilities. And we covered some of that uh, in the prior slides and in the staff report. But we'll be speaking more about that with the stakeholders on January 26th and 27th. We'll also be soliciting input on strategies for increasing resilience to hazards in the community. Then on April 30th, we'll be conducting a virtual community engagement meeting to summarize the input that we received in May, and then also get additional input on those vulnerability assessments and hazards and to, to develop recommendations from the community at large. That will be also available in English and Spanish. We envision releasing the draft CAAP in spring of this year. And then in early summer, We'll be going to committee and then the city council will formally take action to adopt the climate action and adaptation plan in fall of this year. It's important to note that the cost details and the fiscal implications for each of the strategies in the climate action and adaptation plan cannot be known at this time, nor will it be known when we bring the actual final cap back to committee and council. That's because really like a general plan, this is a policy document that will guide actions in the community for years to come. Really what you council can and committee can expect to see is a chapter in the climate action and adaptation plan, which will outline implementation on a yearly basis for how to reduce greenhouse gases in the community, in the municipal buildings and at the, in the city at large. And really to keep that being a living, breathing document, just like a housing element, 
the Climate Action Plan will need to be refreshed and updated around every five years. Within that implementation chapter that we'll be having it as part of the document, there will be year, a year one recommendation, which will be to complete a fiscal cost estimate and a funding strategy for implementing actions in that robust document. That year, that uh, cap, and then the year one fiscal recommendations and that fiscal impact analysis will guide department budget requests, including staffing requests. It'll help inform the city's capital improvement program. And that document, that fiscal cost estimate and funding strategy will assist in overall city financial decision-making over the life of the climate action and adaptation plan. With that, staff's recommendation is that the committee receive an update on our CAAP efforts and information on greenhouse gas emission reduction strategies that will help with the development of the city's final climate action adaptation plan. This concludes our presentation. We'd be happy to answer questions.